Hi and welcome to Little Bits Honey Bees. I'm the Skinny Bee Man. Had some viewers want to know the whole process after you pull a graft out. And so we we'll kind of run through that today. It's a starter hive here. We'll see what they see how many of these cells they finish for us. As always, it's rained all night, all morning. Just stopped raining, it's still cloudy. But we still got to play in the bees. They probably won't be happy, but we still got to play in them. I use the brush because I don't want to shake my the cells. These ornery dudes is get off of there. Try to sting them. Get off of there and quit. Well, as I was saying, that they wouldn't be too happy, and I was right. They're not very happy. You go shaking them off with rain and everything else, they're just not very happy. They got to come off here, so they just might as well get over it. Some people say you can't turn these cells on their side or upside down. This is day six. They're still in uh, the larva stage. They're not in the pupa stage yet. So you, you can, they're pretty tough right now. A couple days they won't be so tough. But we'll pause that, we'll go inside and I'll show you the process, what I do in, in the house with these. <coughs> okay, now we're inside. Um, these are the blocks I put them in. I 3D printed them. If you can look down in there, there's a little well in the bottom of these. That's for the queen. When she hatches, merges, they're starved to death. And they uh, uh, need something to eat right away. So I put, take a, I got a syringe here. And guess what? We're out of honey. I guess you get to see a little bit of all of it then. We're going to fill it up. This is just a syringe like you they doctor horses with. Surely got a jar of honey in here someplace.
stuff gets everywhere. Or it does with me. Me and honey don't get along. Let the air bubble come out of that so I can push the honey up to the tip. And I just take this syringe and put just a little drop in that well down there. You can't just leave it open for a queen, the honey, in the bottom because they get in there and they waller in it. You got to keep it in like a like it's a confined area where they can just get in there to eat and not get their wings and stuff in it. Guarantee if you put it just a drop in the bottom, they'll they'll be stuck to the sides. And these have already been used once. They, uh, the queens ate all the honey out when they hatched last time. That just depends. Sometimes I just take the raw cells back out of here and put them in the hives. And other times I hatch virgins out and put the virgins in the hives. I really like to hatch virgins because I can mark them before I put them in the hives. Don't always get it done, don't have time sometimes and circumstances, but that's my preferred way. They get stuck to the sides. I don't know how to get them out without damaging them, other than I put a couple bees down in there and close them up, and sometimes they'll clean the queen up. It should be all right. I've got a friend of mine, he just puts them under the water faucet and washes them off, but. <laughs> I've never tried that. And I know I'll get some questions where you can get these blocks you can't. My design, I 3D print them. Don't know that there's any other other than the ones that I've given to some pretty close friends. There's any in the United States. They work really well. About done. You'd be surprised how, how hard it is to push a honey through a needle. Thought about using a poultry syringe, but they're so big needles and then you have a honey everywhere. Right, this here the way I can control it and it stays down in that well. And we don't have trouble with the honey, the queens getting stuck. Okay, we got that out of the way. I'm gonna have to start looking in my bottom box. You see this wax they're drawing? They evidently got all the bottom drawed out and they're starting to add wax up here on my cells. Okay, the next thing we do, 
put these rubber bands on here because the queens will get up and push against the side of the cage and they'll push the cells out and get out running around and it makes them foolproof for me turn them sideways and dumping them on the floor been there done that too with the rubber bands I just put them across there like that and then right after we get the cells in we just slide them up on the cell cup and they're locked in they can't they can't uh, get out Okay, there's what it looks like. Nothing, no big deal. Let me see where the camera's at, at that block. Let me see here. Yeah, I can still see the block. And then the, the next thing we do, I just come in, come in here and cut the wax. where they've webbed them in. Clean them up a little bit. Stack them in the, the box. As you can see, there's still plenty of royal jelly in the cup. Good sign that the starter's the right strength. You know, if you followed the series, you know we got that one weak one out there we're just starting. Should have been strong off the bat, but the hive we took it out of it swarmed, and I didn't get near enough bees, and I just kind of been playing with it. Then you come to the ones that's made like this, and it's a challenge not to tear your cell up really hard to get this wax off here because the ends are really easy about tearing off you really got to be careful with them well we won if you get it off the end you can pretty well clean the rest of it up all right the sides are pretty tough ends are really they pull off real easy sometimes you can push the wax back on it and they still hatch but not always then we take the rubber band put it up on the cells like so now we can't dump them out and the queens can't push them out This next cell, this is where one of that big honeycomb broke off out there when the bees decided to sting me. If you can, I'll try to get a close up of it up here. Focus, focus. If you can see right there, it's the wax is pulled off of the end. And I'll just try to get a little bit of wax right here and try to patch it back. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. Most of the time if I don't tear it down too bad, they're pretty well. It did mess up the cocoon inside the cell. Seals it off. Because the incubator runs pretty high humidity about 60 65 percent and 
not too much danger of them drying out. That was a little bit challenging. The rest of these, you can just like that, you can just cut it between them and it's down on the base. It ain't hurting nothing. Got one more there that's challenged. Three they didn't do the greatest in the world. Three five. If it done they done twenty one out of twenty six for us, but I guess consider it's rained every day. Not terrible, but not perfect. And to get a perfect take on grass, everything just gotta be perfect. I only do it probably eight or nine times a year. A lot of times I get all of them but one, but I thought they might be a little angry today. And a starter hive gets angry because basically they're a queenless hive. They're not happy campers to start with. They can't even count. They only done 19. Well, 26. I need near as good. And then what goes on in the house? I get all my graph papers out. mark how many cells that I had to take out of the 26 because I graph 26 three times a week every, or every six days really not even a week and then I come over here and put the graph number on this tag the kind The starter hive number and queen hatch date. The queen hatch date for these is 6 5. And I take this sticky label. what they are and when they're going to hatch. Then usually they hatch within six hours either side of the, this window, the six. So they could start hatching late the fourth or late the sixth. Now we got that part done. That's that's how we take care of them. That's every, what they want. Now if we go in there, and I'll shut this off, and I'll take his incubator, and show you what you, we do when they come out of the incubator. Because I've got I got a couple hives out there that's uh, queenless. We got a red light flashing in this camera. I don't know what it is. The mics are all plugged in. That must mean there's recording. Heck, I don't know nothing about this camera. But here's the incubator. Set our grass in here. That's humidity set. Huh. Another graft here. Another graft there. Another 
graft here. But this is a graft that we're, we'll, is ready to hatch tomorrow. And we need a couple cells out of here, so we'll just take them, take us a couple cells out and put them in a, in a hive. The rest of them go to the mating yard after a bit. And then we'll go outside and show you how to install them. Okay, we're outside now and we're going to show you how to in install these. Pretty simple process. Open the hive up. Guess what? Left my hive tool in the house. Never a good thing. Let me see what I got here. You just pry the frames apart a little bit. Stick that cell right in there. And pinch it. And Really, that's all there is to installing it. I had to have two laying on top. If you enjoy the videos, hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it and you get notified when we do more videos. Hope that we're teaching, teaching you something. Thanks for watching.